Good morning. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room as we prepare for this blessed Monday morning, 10 at 10. Amen. Come on in the room. Amen. 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 Uh, it has been a blessed week leading up to this moment. And I thank God for this moment. So please, as you come on in, tag, invite, and share. Uh, for there is indeed a word. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Jackie. Thank you for joining me this morning. Um, it's been a restful week. And you know, everybody would say, okay, yeah, because everything is shut down. It doesn't matter if that rest didn't start on the inside. And for me, it has been a peaceful place on the inside. Um, and so I heard indeed, uh, thus say the Lord. So we're going to go on into God together this morning, uh, ready with our hearts and minds tuned to receive what he says, what he, the instructions that he is giving. Um, amen, Jesus. So I'm excited as uh, we prepare for this Monday morning, 10 at 10. Amen. Amen. So I, I'm going to go ahead and go on into prayer. And we're going to dive right into the word. Amen. Father, ah, good morning, God. Lord, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you've allowed us yet again an opportunity, a blessed opportunity, a blessed opportunity to be able to join in your name. Father, you say we're two or more gathered. There you are also. So we welcome you to this place. We welcome you to this room. We welcome you to this live. Feed us, O oh God, for we are hungry for your words, your wheels, your way. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that you remove Shanta so that the men and women of God can see you, hear you, and get to know you. Uh, keep us, oh God. All these blessings I ask in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, Demarcus. God bless you. God bless you. Um, so, uh, the Lord said, plain as day, reset. And this hit me a couple of days ago and, you know, and I got it uh, plain as day. I was on the phone. I was working and I was on the phone at the same time with my oldest daughter. And <clears throat> she was talking about some things that she was dealing with and some things that was on her mind. And as she talked, um, you know, depending on where my mindset was, uh, I could have got on that same avenue and on that same page with her. But plain as day, in the midst of the things of concern for her, God said, reset. And as we were talking, it's like, okay, listen, you know, the last couple of weeks he's been talking, he's caused the pause. Uh, there's a reason for it. Uh, you know, and now the God is saying today, reset. Everything that it is, <clears throat> excuse me, that we see or that we have our eyes on or that we're hearing or, you know, we're focused on that and we're missing the blessed opportunity to reset. What does that mean, Shanta? God is saying, I've caused a pause. I've allowed everything that was normal to not be any, any further uh, from the entertainment room all the way down to the housekeeper. There has been a halt and a lot of normalcy. Amen. And God says, but in this hour, this is not the time for us to run scared. This is not the time for us to run fearful. This is the time for us to understand that he is allowing a reset. Be honest with yourself. There's some things that was running you crazy. You were ripping and running, going here and fro, trying to pay this person, robbing Peter to pay Paul. And, you know, Peter still waiting to get his money back. We're going through all of these roller coaster moves. And when God allowed the pause, that's not a concern anymore because we couldn't get to it if we wanted to, whatever the it, whatever the it is that was running us. So God is saying, okay, where it is, you're still focused on how you're going to handle that, how you're going to pay that, <clears throat> what you're going to do with that. God says, I caused a shift in the land for you to know that that's not your concern right now. I caused this shift for you to take this moment to reset your mind, reset your thinking, reset everything about you. Because see, when everything gets back to what people feel is normal, are we going to just dive right back in to what he just delivered us from? That's good, Holy Ghost. Are we going to take those same moves and those same thoughts right back into the new territory that he's blessing us with? Because we have to be honest with ourselves. Every day, there's something new that is surfacing. Every day, there's a new thought, a new app, a new move. Every day, every day, it's something new. So are we going to take the old mindset that wasn't working for us? Mm. How many of us can admit that? 
Are we going to take the old ways of doing things that didn't work for us into this new blessed territory that God has blessed us with? God is saying reset. Reset the way you see your life. Reset the way you see what it is that God has called and appointed you to do. Reset. And a lot of that stuff that we were doing, it can't go. It can't go. It can't go. The power that we gave it in the last season took away. Ah, oh, that's good, Holy Ghost. The power that we gave those things that was running us mentally and emotionally and spiritually. We're worried about whether or not we're good enough. Yeah, that I, uh, whether or not we're good enough to fit in with this crowd or whether or not what we feel like it is, is a talent is good enough to be displayed over here or whether or not, you know what, I'm good enough on my job. Am I, am I, do they like me? Am I a part of this? Clip? All of that stuff, all of that stuff, we gave power over the mere existence and walking in what it is that the Lord has told and called us to do. So are we going to take those same things, those same mental blockages, those same stumbling blocks, some of them we throw in front of ourselves, that's good. Are we going to take those same things into this blessed place, into this blessed territory? God says, reset, reset. There's some business owners that should have been business owners for the last 10 years, but for whatever reason, you were waddling in fear, or I don't think I'm good enough, or I don't have enough money, or you know what, that ain't for me because my family didn't do that thing, or did they? Mm, that's good, Holy Ghost. How do you know that a family member didn't have the same idea, but fear stopped them too? How do you know that a family member did not have the same drive and the ambition that you have? Unfortunately, they did not have any support. How do you know that the things that are going in your mind didn't go in your mama's mind, didn't go in your sister's mind, but they were not willing to reset a lot of people are falling victim to the fear of the land right now. A lot of people are questioning, uh, well, you got this person that say they do this, this person follow that person, this person follow that person, but ain't nobody able to undo what it is that the Lord has said is supposed to be in this time. That is the problem with the world. A lot of people are walking around with God complexes thinking that, you know what? You, 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 that, 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 okay. All right, Jesus. He plants the word on the inside of our belly. He tells us to go ye therefore and teach all the nations. He trusts us with the mere delicate souls of his people. And then a lot of us get to the point that we actually feel like we own the person that God placed in front of us as an assignment to hear what thus say the Lord. And now it's almost like ownership. Ownership. No, 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 no. God said, wait a minute, wait a minute. For such a time as this, I trusted you. I placed you before my people because I needed them to hear what I had to say but I trusted you to be the deliverer of the word, good God Almighty. And the fact that I trusted you to be the deliverer of the word did not make you me. Ah, that's good. The fact that I trusted you to be the example doesn't make you me. God is saying, so I had to remind you. And in this me reminding you, it's time to reset your mind. It's time for you to know who's in control. It's time for you to know from whence, <laughs> from whence I've delivered you from. It is time for you to know that guess what? If I did it before back there, I can do this thing again and it's going to be bigger and it's going to be better and it's going to be greater. Okay, yeah, but Shanta, you know, so many people have died. So many people are sick. Listen, my heart is hurting for the ones that in this season, God is calling a group of people home and... The identity is COVID-19. <laughs> it's amazing how the world can be creative. The identity of all of the people that are journeying home to be with the Lord. It is being laid on, blamed on COVID-19. But it does not change the fact that God says when our number is up, regardless of what, by what journey, it's up. It's up. We've gotten to a point now where we're giving so much attention and so much fear to this thing that is going all across the land because of social media, because of the television, because of the radio, because of, yeah, oh, ye of little faith. A lot of us that has been planted before God's people to take and teach and learn, teach them and help them learn how to get closer to God. Teach them that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. To be able to teach them that at the end of the day, God still is. It doesn't matter what everybody else is saying. It doesn't matter what everybody else is thinking. It doesn't matter what everybody else is flocking to. God said, reset your mind in this time. I've taken it cost everything that is normal in your life to not be normal. You can't have access to it. Will you commune with me now? 
Will you sit down and hear what I have for your life now? Okay, well, that's hard to do. Listen, preach to the choir when you say that because I'm always busy. I'm always on the go. And for the first couple of days, I was like, okay, well, I got to go. Oh, wait, no, you can't do that. Okay, but if I go, mm, oh, no, you can't do that either. But what if I, now, mm -mm, mm -mm. is that me operating in fear? No, that's operating in wisdom. Obedience is better than sacrifice. All of the things that a lot of us have been chasing, we're chasing this, we're chasing this environment, and we can't get it unless it's a room full of people. God said, what you going to do now? What you going to do now? What you going to do now? You're not standing in front of those room of people that obviously validated you and you fail to realize that I'm the one that gave you and blessed you for whatever it is that allowed you, I, to be in front of the masses, to have access to great men and great women, to be able to walk through certain doors. God said, reset your mind. Reset. Reset. Oh, how a, a, a blessed people we are that God will take the time to say, you know what? All right. Jesus. All right. Look, God, I, they missed it. They missed it. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They know what, not what they say. They know not what they think. So, okay, just let, let, let's work with them. We're going to cause a shift. We're going to cause, we're going to allow a shift. We're going to allow a disruption in their normalcy. Lord, maybe we can get their attention this way. Reset. Reset. Oh, because he's gotten our attention. So what are we doing with it? Are we sitting around complaining about a whole bunch of things, which is really bringing to the surface that we really did not believe in the first place? We really did not believe that God has all power in his hands in the first place. We really did not believe that. No, it's not that just I'm just that great. It's the fact that God chose us, you, me in a season to be able to be the example, the voice that his people hear, the voice that his people need. And then we fell victim to the uh, to the platform. We fell victim to the spotlight. We fell victim. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. We're in a season where God is saying, all right, you've been singing a certain song. Ah, you've been walking a certain walk. You've been talking a certain talk. Now, is that going to sustain you in this season? I hear my grandmother's voice saying, stand on right and righteousness at all times. It doesn't matter if it's relevant. Mm. Doesn't matter if it's popular. It's about purpose and it's about sustaining me. And if you don't have the solid foundation of God understanding that any great thing that we've been able to do from the being just a nine to five employee all the way down to birthing your own business. Honey, God gave you those gifts. God gave you those. Huh? He gave you the mindset to be able to birth that thing. And then we got to the point where, you know what? Now I'm untouchable. Certain people can't gain access to me or certain people can't have access to me unless this, unless that. I need this. I need that. Okay. So what are we doing now? What are we doing now? A lot of the same platform that has been made a mockery of, a lot of the you know, I've heard it. Oh, good God Almighty. And it used to get on my nerves. Understand, listen, before there was a Facebook, God let us know that there was going to be <laughs> fake prophets. They didn't just develop because Facebook is here. But it's amazing that a lot of the masses started to use those languages and use those terminologies. You know, all your Facebook prophets, your fake phony this, your fake phony that, just because somebody's crowd was not as grandioso as your crowd. But yet, the pause in the land that God has allowed, the pause that he has caused, everybody is flocking to the exact same thing. Food for thought. What does that say? What does that say? What does that say? It's us. It's us that plants the seed of, you know what? No, you ain't good enough to be over here. And honey, that started way before Facebook, way before social media. No, you're from, not from the right side of the family, so you can't attend this church. Ouch. Mm -mm, no, so you don't have the look that we need to take in to get this particular message out. So I'm gonna need you to go over there, honey. Everybody on this live and everybody that you know has had that story, and we've come to another season. We've come to another point where God is saying, "You know what? I'm tired of the mess. I'm tired of the craziness. I'm tired of the idols. I'm tired of oh, you can't do, you can't do. Where am I in the midst of everything that I blessed you to be able to do? Reset." Reset your mind. 
Reset your focus. Because that thing that was working for you back then, quiet as it kept, it wasn't working. Because if it was working, you wouldn't be losing your mind right now just because you can't see your way. Just because you don't understand where the next is going to come from. It's just no, 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 no. It did not work over there. It did not work over there. I, I hear I hear grandma this morning. I hear grandma saying, okay, yeah, they can go ahead and do all that crazy, all that crazy stuff that they want. They can lay and play. They can lie and manipulate. They can steal. They can throw their rocks. They can hide their hands. But it won't last. It won't last. Enjoy the ride while you're being rebellious. Enjoy the ride while you're being hard-headed. Enjoy the ride while you're trying to convince people that it's you, it's you, it's you. Enjoy the ride because there will come a moment where I will cause a pause. Then what you gonna do? Then where you gonna go? Then who you gonna call? Because everybody that I bless you to be connected to, God says by following and chasing after me, I granted you access to the greatness of the land. And then I give it to you and you forget about me? Ah, no. Reset your mind. Reset your life. Reset your moves. Reset your beliefs. Reset those things that you've allowed to take and run your mere existence on the land that I blessed you with. God says, reset. Reset. You can't take that old stuff over here. It ain't gonna work. And if you have the mindset, I heard your Holy Spirit, to even think about bringing the old mess over here, then I'm gonna have to block you. Ah! <laughs> we, we get upset about folks blocking us on Facebook. What about God blocking us because of disobedience? What about God blocking us from the blessings of the land, from the bless, the abundant blessings of those things that he has stored up for us, all because of our ego and our attitude? God, no, I don't need you to block me, Jesus. I don't need you to block me, Jesus. So you know what? For such a time as this, I thank you. I thank you, God. I hear you. And it's time for me to reset. It's time for me to open my Bible, everybody. Hey, Jesus, <laughs> I hear you, Lord. It's time for me to go back to what I know what works. It's time for me to go back to what kept my ground mother 80 something plus years that kept your grandparents 80 90 something plus years ah no reset we've gotten away from what sustains us and we've fallen victim to the mere thing that was intended to be a blessing that's good that's good that's good. That's good, Holy Ghost. That's good. We've fallen victim to the mere thing that was intended to be our blessing. Mhm. Mm yeah. That's good. God says reset. 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 And you know, I used to say, all right, Shanta, you could do this, you could do that, you could sing, you could write, you could do this, you can do that. Lord, why you got me doing so many different things at one time? He said, because I never told you, you, Shanta, that it was just one gift, one way. See, baby, there are many avenues and many journeys that you can travel to get to me. And so for such a time as this, if I need you to sing over here, fa-la-la-la-la it is. If I need you to write over here, okay, I'm going to provide the pen and a piece of paper. If I need you standing in front of my people to speak and teach, I'm going to provide the atmosphere. You're not supposed to have to worry about how it's going to be paid for. Who's, <laughs> who's going to be in the crowd? Does this person believe that what I planted on the inside of you is actually important enough to be before the people? All of that stuff, all of that stuff, we've fallen victim to men and women of God. And now that God has allowed the pause, we don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. Well, I ain't going to say we because I, I do. I do. And God said, okay, Shanta, this morning, I need you to tell my people, reset. Reset how you see that thing. See, it doesn't stop. Oh, that's good, Holy Ghost. It doesn't stop the fact that I birthed. Something on the inside of you. I planted it, expecting you to birth that thing in the land. But God said something a few days ago. I think it was, uh, he had me to post it. Um, uh, that just because, you know, you run into an unexpected move in a game doesn't mean you shut the game down. You just write a new play. God is saying, reset. It's time for a new play. Oh, the journey is still, you, you're still headed towards that blessed destination, the abundant blessings of the Lord. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's still your focus point. But you know what? It's time to pull out the playbook. And we're going to have to rethink that thing. We're going to have to reset that thing. Because where it was, we fell victim to it in the last season. Don't fall victim to it in this season. Because a lot of people didn't make it to this season. A lot of people fell victim eternally to it in the last season 
So Lord, I thank you that right now I'm sitting here and I'm in my right mind. I'm focused on you. I hear you. I thank you that I have breath in my body. I thank you that, you know what? I'm not wallowing or drowning in self-pity and negativity and craziness. Lord, I thank you that you know what? You still got me in the game. So what is it that you still have me for? What is it that I'm supposed to do? Where is it that I'm supposed to go? Does it actually matter? The flyest car that I can drive, I ain't going to be able to take that car with me when I leave here. And it definitely ain't going to be nothing that I can leave a leg behind for the family that you blessed me with does it matter that I have the grandioso house because the moment that you call me home the doors are going to be locked and I don't have access to it in the first place so I tell you what Lord show me what it is that I'm supposed to do show me what seeds that I'm supposed to plant that is going to carry over to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation and the next generation we've gotten so caught up in the material we've allowed the materials that we possess to convince us that we are on a certain level. And da, 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 God says, okay, what, what do you have now? What are you looking at now? I've shut it down. What are we doing now? And where is all of this going? At the end of the day, I trust God. I hear him. I see him. He bothers me in my sleep. Yes, he bothers me because I want to stay asleep. But you know what? I'm grateful for after I'm awake. That's good. That was good. That was good. That was good. Because even though I looked at it as a bother, I was better because I woke up. I was better because I hearkened to his voice. I was better. Oh, that's good, Holy Ghost. Because it wasn't about what Shanta thought. It wasn't about me being all in my feelings and I got an attitude with this person. And you know what? This person did this seven years ago. Really? And you still walking around carrying that around. That's part of the thing that is blocking you from your blessing. Let it go. Reset your mind. It ain't important. It ain't got a hell and a hell to put you in. It ain't going to pay your bills. It ain't got five on nothing. God says reset. You've given too many carnal things. I hear you, Holy Ghost. You've given too many carnal things access. You've given too many carnal thoughts access. Come on, be honest with yourself. You're walking in the store and you see somebody that you remember something that they did and your spirits was all happy. And then you look at them and all of a sudden now you got a unit. You've given it, given it too much power. You've given it too much power. And see, once you gave that power away, that means you feel the space where God was trying to talk to you. Well, God was trying to give you a different power. Ah, that's good, Holy Ghost. Well, God was trying to pull you closer to him. What you worried about that over there for? What you worried about them over there for? I'm the one that gave you your breath. I'm the one that gave you the gifts and the ideas and, and told you to go ye therefore. Why are you wasting mental space over here? All right. And then work for you back there. So I'm allowing you an opportunity to reset. 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 And watch what God has for you. Reset. Okay. All right. God says go here. No, you weren't crazy for loving the person that you love. That's the heart that God gave you. You weren't crazy for trusting the person that you trusted. That's the heart God gave you. But you got to understand how the enemy works. The enemy. Ah, you got to understand how he works. He'll take and use those people that unfortunately fall victim to allowing him to use them. To take and get on the inside. Get in that heart. Get in that mind. Plant seeds of doubt. Plant seeds of negativity. And then you wind up being man's failed result of what? Take the power back. Take the power back. God says reset. Let's reset our way of seeing what it is that God has for us to do. You have illness that existed before COVID-19. You have people that were battling and on the battlefield before this virus, this illness, this sickness showed up. This is just new to some other people. It's now just on a much more major scale. But a lot of the fear that everybody is falling victim to right now, honey, this has been people's lives just about all of their lives. So what does that mean? Well, it's about what you're focused on. You're focused on this thing because it's a new thing in your lifetime. That's good, Holy Ghost. It's a new thing that is knocked on your door. But it's been somebody else's reality 24-7. That we ignored because they didn't look a certain way. They didn't sound a certain way. They didn't have a certain amount of money. They wouldn't from a certain family. God said, uh-uh. No. No. You passed by me. All because I was wrapped in what you look, <laughs> looked at as the homeless person laying on the side of the road and you wouldn't even say hi. You passed by me because I lied to Jesus say, okay, all right. 
All right, so these hearts have turned a little cold towards my people. These hearts have grown a little stony towards my people. Just because you may think that your house is in order doesn't mean that ah, that's good, Holy Ghost. That's good. Doesn't mean that now you are free of the responsibility to be able to go and reach and teach and educate somebody else. Reset your mind. Reset your planting. That's good, Holy Ghost. Reset your planting. Reset where you're planting these seeds. Reset how you're making sure that you know what? People understand. All we got to do is call on the name of Jesus. And all the crooked places are made straight. Didn't say that it was going to happen microwave instantaneous. Oh, but then that's where God gives you the tenacity to be able to make it through. That's where God gives you the strength to be able to make it through. But it all starts with believing in him first. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? <laughs> God said, do, do you not see what I'm doing? That's scripture. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Do you not perceive what I am doing? Well, you know why a lot of us can't perceive what he's doing? Because we're too blinded by the things that we felt like we were doing. Mm. And now that our hands have been tied, don't nobody know what to do. No, no matter what, nowhere to go. I, 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 can't, I can't get to this paper over here. I, I can't get to that over there. I, I, I can't do this over here. I can't do, no, you can't do it because you were more relying on the things that you felt like you were producing with your own hands instead of flocking to the atmospheres that God granted you access to. That's good, Holy Ghost. That's good. That's good. That's good. And we got to the point where, you know what? If it wasn't rele relevant, if it wasn't popular, if the masses that had the names wasn't doing it, we didn't have time. We, we, we didn't have time. We didn't have time to go over there. We didn't have time to go do this. We can't sit down and have a conversation, but we are all God's people, breathing the breath that God blessed every last one of us with, walking the land that he granted every last one of us. Ah, he gave us access. He gave us access. God says, reset. Reset your thinking. Reset how you're doing this thing. Reset those that are going with you. Reset, reset, because we're in a season right now. Ah, that's the good Holy Ghost. We're in a season right now. Well, a lot of those people that was running with you, you're starting to see now that it was just about convenience. It wasn't commitment. That's good. God says, I'm needing my people to connect together in commitment. Whether it looks good, whether it looks bad, whether it's gray, whether it's questionable. The common factor is that they all trust me. They all fall to me. It doesn't, ah, that's good, Holy Ghost. It does not matter what everybody else may think. It doesn't matter what everybody else's opinion of what he's given you is. God says, walk in me, dwell in me, believe in me, trust me. Reset. Reset. And the reset, I hear you, Holy Ghost, the reset does not change the purpose that he has for your life. He knew what he needed you to do, wanted you to do when he created you. It's our big, bad, and bold selves that got in the way. It's our opinions of, hey, 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 get on my level that got in the way. God says, no, forget your level. Get on my level. Hear me. Flock unto my voice. Ah, mm, that's good, Holy Ghost. God says, reset. Reset in the moment that we allow ourselves to reset our thinking, reset what it is that we're doing, reset what it is that we're planting into the land. Ah, I heard you, Holy Ghost. It ain't a momentary thing. A lot of us get caught up in the moment. A lot of us get caught up in the feel good of the moment. A lot of us get caught up in the validation of the moment. A lot of us get caught up in the, you know what? I got a couple of bands in this moment. But is that moment full of everything that's going to sustain you when you don't see all of the things that you allowed yourself to fall victim to, that you allowed yourself to, ah, that's good, Holy Ghost, that you allowed yourself to rely on more than you relied on the one that blessed you to give you access to it. God says, reset everything, everything. And all of those things that you felt like you couldn't have because your bank account didn't look a certain way, God says, reset your mind. Come sit down at the table, commune with me, and watch I give you that and more. Ah, it's greater than us. It's bigger than us. It's bigger than that thing that we stay up late in the midnight hour trying to put all the pieces together like a puzzle. It's bigger than us. 
It's bigger than us. And you're going to have some people that immediately their mindset is going to say, man, ain't nobody got time for that. Look, I got to figure out how I'm going to do this. And that's the problem. Let me know how that work out for you because you got to figure it out as opposed to saying, all right, Lord, I know that there's nothing, one, nothing new under the sun. It's just new to me. That's number one. Two, I know that if you allowed it, God, it got to be for my good because you're not a God that will lie. So I need you to allow this mind to take and connect with your mind, one, so that I can have mental peace. That's, ha, ha, ha. I need you to allow this mind to connect with your mind. I need to be able to see this thing the way you're seeing it so I don't fall victim to what the enemy is trying to convince me of. No, my life didn't stop. God just allowed a pause for me to reset the way I've been doing some things. Mm -hmm. The way I've been thinking about some things. Some people that I've been communing with. Some people that I allowed in my circle. Some people that I allowed at my table. And if you are honest with your yourself and you allow yourself to think about the thing you know what i did allow that i did do that i said that and because i allowed that and because i did that and because i said that that happened reset all right god you got my intention all right all right yep mm -hmm. i fell victim to that thing all right so here we go reset what is it that you would have me to do what is it that you would have me to say? Where is it that you would have me to go? A lot of people think that they're secure because uh, I've been hearing the terminology, you know, we're considered, uh, what is it, uh, the, 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 the necessity uh, for, the, for the world right now. So, hey, my jobs are secure. I, I'm good. I ain't, I ain't losing no money. I'm, I'm good with that. Um, mm, okay. All right. Reset. Because there's nothing untouchable. There's nothing unshiftable. God says reset. And if you are one of the ones that are blessed in a position to where you really doesn't see nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. That doesn't mean now that we're automatically on a different level than those that are losing. What that is, what that means is God just created an opportunity for you to be of good service. God just created an opportunity for you to love your neighbor. As you love yourself, as you love God, as you love God, God just gave you an opportunity. So what are we going to do with it? Reset, 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 reset. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. A lot of those things that we were worried about and a lot of those things that we, you know, feel like, okay, this is taking up too much of my time and this is that. God calls a pause in the land and you ain't even got to worry about that no more. A lot of people ain't having to go to work. Guess what? That's money you ain't having to spend on gas. That's more time that he's giving you to commune with him. I told my daughter, we were talking about, uh, she's getting ready to graduate college. Hallelujah. And there was a lot of things that she was saying that she didn't feel was right. And she just wanted to do this. And she just wanted to do that. And she just wanted to walk out on this. And she just, I said, well, you know what, baby? It's amazing. When we look at it that way and we look at it with carnal eyes and we look at it the way man has, has trained us to look at it, we will fall victim to the way men feel like things are supposed to go. But at the end of the day, God can bless you to be the blessing in the middle of the craziness. That's good, Holy Ghost. God will take and say, you know what? For such a time, hey, your labor was not in vain. And I've been training you, shaping you, and molding you for this field. So I need you to be, I need her. I need you to be right here in the center of all of the chaos. The eyes that are going to fall on you, when they fall on you, baby, they're going to see me. So don't think that every roller coaster that I allowed you to go on was in vain. Don't think that certain people walking out of your life. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> no, 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 no. God says, I had to shape and mold you to be able to stand in times like this. All of those carnal things that we've fallen victim to, it ain't what's going to sustain us. God says, for such a time as this, for such a time as this, scripture says, ah, now it springs forth. Now he springs you forth. What are you going to do with it? You got to reset your mind. In order to be able to stand firm on the word, in the word, and being an example of the word. Reset. Mm. And the abundant blessing that is waiting on you on the other side of reset. Ah, blows your mind even when you think about thinking about it. I love you to life.
That is the word that God says for today. Reset your mind. Doesn't matter how hear you, Holy Ghost. Doesn't matter your status. Doesn't matter your popularity. Doesn't matter your titles. We are all on the same field right now. We're all on the same field physically right now. But God has some of us spiritually on a different level to be able to be the example and the reminder of him that his people need in this season. Reset your mind. Reset what it is that you're doing. Reset how you see that thing and see the abundant blessings of God smack dab in the middle of it. I love you to life. Ain't nothing you can do about it. And until God says, we'll meet again, share this word. Be a blessing to somebody else. Somebody is sitting, waiting on just a moment of positive to shift their entire life. And you could be the deliverer of that on this day. Reset your mind. How many times didn't we share something because there was just a little ugliness on the inside of us? Man, ain't nobody finna share that. God says, okay, all right. As simple as a share as you being obedient to bless my people. Not your will being done, but my will being done. And the only way we can do God's will over our ego <laughs> is to renew ourselves daily in him. Commune with him daily. And he'll tell you what you're supposed to do. Where you're supposed to, where you're supposed to plant. Where you're supposed to go. And where you're supposed to stay away from. I love you to life. This is Shanta. This has been a blessed Monday morning, 10 at 10. I'm ready to run. I'll see you soon. God duh. Good God of